Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the last couple of lectures of EC3400 Analog Electronics, we've looked at small signal models for BJTs. Now, in order to create these small signal models, we need to compute the small signal parameters. And in order to do that, we need to know what the DC bias currents are. So let's imagine you have a transistor sitting here, and I'm focusing on the DC bias circuit. So we're using capital letters for our circuit variables. And we have base and collector currents flowing in, the emitter current flowing out. And in general, we're just going to assume a certain value for the base two emitter voltage. Usually that's 600 millivolts or 700 millivolts or 650 millivolts. The exponential curve associated with the BJT is pretty steep and that's usually a reasonable assumption. Now I'm going to do everything in terms of an NPN transistor. Everything I'm describing here works for PMPs. You just flip the direction that you're measuring the voltages and you reverse the current arrows and then all of the equations magically work. Now there are a lot of different bias schemes for transistor circuits. And instead of analyzing each one individually from scratch, what I would like to do is develop a general strategy for analyzing bias schemes. So the rest of the circuit out here may be pretty complicated. What we'll do is we'll assume that we can represent the circuit looking out of the base, the collector and the emitter, in terms of Thevenin equivalence. So looking out the base, I'll assume that I can simplify this to some Thevenin voltage VBB and some Thevenin resistance RBB, and similarly for the collector and for the emitter. Now this is going to work out pretty simply for the resistor divider bias scheme I'm going to do as an example in this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll look at another bias scheme where this gets a lot more complicated because the Thevenin voltage looking out the base might include something like the collector current. We'll talk about that next time. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is write a Kirchhoff voltage law equation for this loop right here going into the base and out of the emitter and back around. So the voltage difference between this point in the circuit and this point in the circuit is VBB minus VEE. So let's write the voltage drops on the other side. So we're going to drop a voltage over the resistor RBB according to Ohm's law as the base current times RBB. We're going to then have a drop of VBE through this PN junction of the transistor. And then we have a drop of IE, REE through the REE resistor. Now in the example I'm about to do, these resistors are just single resistors in the circuit, but these resistors might represent some much more complicated Thevenin computation. All right, so let me move this VBE term over to the left-hand side so we can write something like this. Now I would like to get an expression for the collector current. Right now I have it in terms of the base and the emitter current. But now I can remember that the collector current is beta times the base current, and the collector current is alpha times the emitter current. So I can divide both sides of this equation by beta and both sides of this equation by alpha and rewrite what's on the right in terms of IC over beta and IC over alpha. And this is what Professor Marshall Leach calls the BJT bias equation. Now, if the only ICs that actually appear in this expression are on the right here, you can then rearrange the expression and directly solve for IC like thus. Now, in the examples I'm going to do in the next lecture, IC actually shows up elsewhere, and this can get more complicated, but we can use this kind of expression for now. Here we computed an expression for the collector current. If you wanted, you could also make a similar expression for the emitter current. You could use this expression here and replace the base current with this expression for the emitter current where we'll divide by beta plus one and we would wind up with something that looks like this. And now we have things in terms of the emitter current. And again, if the emitter current is only in these two terms on the right hand side, you can solve it like this. But again, we will see an example in the next lecture where this is more complicated. So let's take a look at one of the simplest bias schemes where we try to create a bias voltage at the base using just a resistor divider. Now, we can't compute the voltage at the base directly from this because there is a bit of current 
flowing into the base because this is a BJT. So we have to think about that. Now, computing the Thevenin and equivalent looking out of the base, I basically cut the wire here. So when I'm computing the Thevenin and equivalent, I'm assuming that no current is flowing here, in which case the Thevenin voltage VBB can be computed by superposition. So if I imagine grounding the negative supply here, well, then I can get the voltage at the base by just using a voltage division rule where I have R2 in the numerator. And then again, using the idea of superposition, if I imagine temporarily grounding the positive power supply voltage here, I have another voltage division rule using R1 in the numerator. And now to compute the Thevenin resistance looking out of the base, I imagine grounding both of these voltage sources here, and then I see a parallel combination of R1 with R2. And the Thevenin equivalent looking out the emitter, well, that's pretty easy to compute. The Thevenin voltage is just V minus, and the Thevenin resistance is just RE. It's already a Thevenin equivalent circuit. So we can take those quantities and plug them into this expression for the collector current that we found previously. So there's a couple of things I would like to point out here. First of all, let's imagine that you don't have a resistor down here at the emitter, so this term goes away. Well, then the collector current is pretty highly dependent upon what beta is. I could imagine multiplying the numerator and the denominator by beta and writing beta up here. So as beta shifts around, the collector current shifts around. And beta is not really a reliable parameter. Remember, beta actually depends on the collector to emitter voltage, and beta will vary from transistor to transistor, even of the same model within the same batch, and it will vary with temperature. And extremely confusingly, if you look on data sheets, like here I'm looking at the 2N3906 data sheet from ST, and you look up HFE with a capital F, capital E, this is equivalent to beta. Beta itself changes with the collector current. So that's very confusing because we're using beta to compute a collector current. So I guess if you really wanted to be thorough, you should compute the collector current, pick a new beta based on that, and then redo the calculation and do something iterative. And at that point, you might as well ask SPICE. And these values are just minimum values. For a collector current of 10 milliamps, beta ranges from 100 to this max of 300. Oh, and don't be thrown by the minus signs here. These minus signs are this way because whoever set up this data sheet for the PMP transistor used a ridiculous convention. My main point is try to make a design where beta doesn't matter much. It's not like the case with the mu parameter, the amplification factor of vacuum tubes. You can really rely on the mu parameter. That's something I discussed in my guitar amplification and effects class. Beta is not a parameter you can rely on. You generally want your designs to be robust to changes in beta. One way to do that is to include this emitter resistance. If you get a very good transistor, then you can get a situation where you have beta that's very big and alpha that's close to one. And then if you pick this emitter resistor to be big enough, this term effectively goes away relative to the term associated with the resistance and you can then use it to select the collector current. The other point I want to make goes all the way back to this initial slide. Notice that there are some things that are curiously missing here. There's no VCC, and there's no RCC. All of the stuff happening above the transistor here doesn't matter as far as figuring out what IC is. Now, that's in terms of these precise Thevenin equivalents. When you're computing the Thevenin equivalents, it might be the case that the collector current shows up in VBB, in which case it will show up here. We'll see an example of that next time. But as far as the Thevenin equivalents go, these terms don't show up. But they do show up in another computation. All of our discussion has assumed that this transistor is operating in the active mode. We should check that. We need to check that the voltage between the collector and the base is positive, because then that means that this PN junction here is reverse biased. So we can expand that out by writing the voltage at the collector as VCC 
minus the voltage drop across this resistance RCC, which is RCC times IC according to Ohm's law. And over here, we have the voltage at the base, and that's VBB minus the voltage lost across the resistance RBB. So that's just IB times RBB according to Ohm's law. Now, depending on your particular circuit, it might be easier to compute the voltage at the base coming from the direction of the emitter. So I could compute that by taking VEE and then adding IE times REE for the voltage across the resistor. And notice I need to use an addition sign because the arrow is running in the opposite direction of what I had previously. And then I also need to add in the voltage for the base emitter junction. So in terms of the Thevenin equivalents for our voltage divider bias example, in addition to what we've already computed, we need to compute the Thevenin equivalent looking out the collector, and that's pretty easy because it's already a Thevenin equivalent. And then I can take these values and substitute them into these expressions here, depending on what floats your boat, and see if the resulting numbers are indeed bigger than zero.